Hey guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to The Build Room. In this week's episode, we are talking upholstery. And more specifically, I have a ratty old brown seat out of an RA28 like the one behind me. And we're gonna try and fabric dye that black. We're gonna use a bunch of different techniques and we're also gonna do some destructive testing at the end to see how it holds up. So stick around and check it out. All right, so in last week's episode, we freshened up the dashboard on this bad boy, but um, it didn't go that smoothly. And if you remember, the seat still had a problem. So that is the more representative black uh, that should be the color of this upholstery. And if we look at the back where the sun's been hitting it, it's starting to go a little bit purple. So the idea is I wanna redye all of this fabric back to an even black. But when we did the dash, and the dash you know, doesn't look too bad, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to get that even, uh, and there was probably a couple of different techniques I could have tried. So, this is our test mule. Now the advantage of this one is, I don't think it's ever been retrimmed, so we're not dealing with a weird sort of uh, felty velour fabric in there. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the original covering. Uh, and also, while we're here, in addition to trying to dye the fabric black, we can also, Try dyeing the vinyl on the back of it uh, and see how well this stuff dyes vinyl. And hopefully at the end of it, we'll have a uniformly black seat. Now, there's a lot of staining on here, which is probably a good thing. We'll see how well it covers up. And then like I said at the end, we're gonna do some destructive testing and see how well this holds up. Um, I don't feel too bad about that because look, as you can see, this is very stained and mottled and it's got a few rips and things. So it's probably never gonna go back on a car retrimmed like this and we're not gonna destroy the whole thing. We're just gonna see how well the product holds up. And what I'm looking to do here is to dial in my process so that when I go to do the actual interior that I want to retain, I don't end up cocking it up because it's kind of a one shot deal. Now, the reason I'm using the spray on dye, this is just an aerosolized can, is that I wanna try and get as even a coverage as possible. So using the spray dye, it's kind of like spray paint. You've gotta have a clean surface to start with and you've got to go slowly and do light coats. So with that in mind, we're just going to give this thing a really good clean down first. Now I'm just going to use a Meguiar's uh, upholstery cleaner and we'll probably use some wax and grease remover on the vinyl just to make sure it's absolutely spick and span. All right, now a lot of this black stuff in here, um, that's just actually, it looks like someone's been welding close to this seat. This has been in my shed for a long time. So I didn't do this damage, which is unusual for me. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, just adding to the fact that this is not really a salvageable piece of upholstery, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Now, all we have to do is shake this up, spray it on, let it penetrate for sort of 15, 20 seconds, and then clean it off. So that actually came up pretty good. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell at the moment because it's still obviously very wet from uh, all the cleaners. But what we're gonna do is throw this out in the sun, let it dry off, and then we'll uh, bring it in and uh, take another look. All right, so this thing has been drying overnight. Um, it came out really, really good. That Meguiar's product seems to be earning its keep. Uh, the vinyl on the back, uh, not quite as nice, but the bottom line is, I'm pretty sure uh, with that, spraying over it with the vinyl dye is going to hide a lot of those sins. Now, before we just go blasting this with uh, the black dye, uh, there's a couple of things. Now, on the vinyl, I have vinyl dyed before, and I did find that in certain instances, it sort of scratched or flaked off. Could have been the way I applied it, could have been the product, who knows. But for this one, because we've got such a big amount of vinyl on the back of the seat, I'm going to scotch bright it uh, in certain areas. And what I'll do is I've got three scotch bright pads here. I've got a green, a gray, and a white. But what I'm gonna do on the back of this is I'm gonna have half of the back of the chair just 
normal vinyl. Uh, and then the other side, I'm gonna break into three bits and I'm gonna do coarse, medium, and fine, uh, and just see whether once we've painted it, any of the marks from the scotch bright show through. Now, on the fabric portion, there's really no need to do any prep work other than the cleaning, which we've already done, but I'm also gonna try a couple of different techniques there. The back half, I'm just gonna spray the dye. But on the base of the seat, uh, I'm actually going to try spraying it. And then I've got some brushes here. This one's just a shoe polish brush and this is a generic dish brush, but we're just gonna spray it with the black dye and then we will work the dye into the fabric with the brushes and see if that changes the way in which we get cover or see if it makes a smoother, cleaner, finished product. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move the seat over back in front of the RA28 again. I'm gonna throw some uh, coverings and sheets and bits and pieces over the RA28 so that it doesn't get overspray on it. But yeah, nothing difficult. So uh, let's get all that stuff covered up and start spraying. All right, so halftime update. Um, we are out of dye. Uh, I went through two full cans in doing what we've just done now. Now, if we step far back away here, looks like a pretty decent black seat, black edges, good to go. If we get closer up, you should be able to see that we're not quite got the coverage here that you would really want. Um, at least it is uh, fairly evenly distributed. The brushing, the brushing did not work. So. Uh, if you can see that, it looks very motley. Basically, you're just moving the dye around. You get such even application with a spray that I think brushing this is pretty much worthless. Now, if we have a look at the back of this, we do have pretty reasonable cover. That's about the third or fourth coat, and it did start to stick after a while. It certainly stuck a lot better where we had scotch brighted. So I would recommend, if we look up close, there's some runs there which aren't great but there aren't really any uh, marks from the Scotch-Brite pads. So I would suggest just use a nice heavy green Scotch-Brite pad. So where to now? So two cans of this Auto Glim dye gone, and these weren't cheap. I think these were about $40 a can. So we spent about 80 Australian dollars on this so far. And it's really getting to the point where it might not be economical to do it that way. So the other thing is that I can't get two more cans of this anytime soon. Uh, it's just before Christmas, shipping to WA because of floods and railway closures is crazy at the moment. So it will take another month, probably more, to get another set of cans for this. So what I have done is I've shopped down and I've just grabbed a local product, which is the Duplicolor vinyl and fabric dye. I have tried these before, um, the Duplicolor brand, but not this type. And in fact, I tried this brand probably 
20 years ago. So I'm hoping it's come a long way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start evening this out. And if it looks like it's a decent product, I'll also start on the back there. Um, I'll probably stop once I've done the bottom so that you guys can see a contrast between those two. So yeah, let's keep spraying and see how we go. All right, so that went on a lot differently to the auto glim. You could probably tell that just from the video. Uh, I'm gonna leave it to dry and then we'll come back and see what the plan is for the rest of it. All right, so this has had about an hour to dry. It's pretty good. Um, now, the main thing we can see here is obviously the color is a lot better between here and here. You can really tell that this is a lot blacker now. Um, I'm sure the camera will pick that up as well. Now, I don't wanna poo-poo that whole thing right now uh, because there are some things that we're gonna do that might fix that. Um, but for now, yeah, I'm super happy with that color. Uh, I'll probably give another light coat to this and I'm also gonna do the top of the seat now and also um, just tidy up the back vinyl. So, you know, this looks pretty good, but there are some areas you can see on the top of this piping where, uh, I, I mean, I'm certain that I got dye on that. I think what's happened is it's just congealed and run off. So we're gonna do that, um, do the front, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the finished product. All right, we have had a full day to dry now. Um, yeah, it's, it's very dry. It is also very um, firm, I wanna say. Uh, yeah, a little bit crunchy, definitely a lot of material soaked into that. So we're not done yet. We're gonna try and do something about that feel. And we're also uh, gonna do, uh, well, semi-destructive, fully destructive testing, I don't know. We're gonna put this thing through its paces and see just how well it holds up. So. The back of this came out pretty damn well too. I do wish that it didn't have the level of gloss that it has. It is really quite high gloss. I don't know if Duplicolor make a uh, non-gloss version of this. A satin or a matte would be nice. It kind of looks like it's just had a really heavy coating of armor all put over a standard black which you know is not bad, but probably not the look I would go for in a classic car. Now, in terms of the durability testing of this, the main thing about uh, vinyl spray versus paint is that vinyl spray is meant to be significantly more flexible, right? Because all of this stuff has to move because when you're getting in and out of the car, if you picture this as a full vinyl seat, you know, you're sitting on this every day, you're gonna be moving it around. So it has to deal with some flex but it also has to deal with abrasion. You know, you get in, you got uh, buttons on the back of your jeans or whatever, and you're rubbing against it. You don't want this to sort of start to peel off or anything like that. So testing wise, now I could grab my car keys or something and drag them across this and it's gonna damage it, right? For sure, because it would damage the underlying vinyl. The vinyl dye is not an impenetrable barrier. So I figure what I'm gonna do here is on the cloth side, I'm actually gonna run the cleaner over this again. So. We'll spray the whole thing with the Meguiar's, we'll rub it down with the brush, uh, and then we'll wipe it off with a uh, microfiber. I would imagine at this first time that we clean this, we're gonna get a lot of black off. So I'm hoping we get as much of the surplus dye that's still left on the top uh, off, and hopefully that will also soften it up slightly. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but we're gonna give it a shot. Then, to do slightly more destructive testing, we're gonna bust out the gurney over there, and we're gonna high pressure wash this back and front. And that's gonna tell us two things. Firstly, whether this softens up even further once it gets some water washed through it, the equivalent of dyeing something and throwing in the washing machine. Um, and also, the power of the pressure washer should really test the adhesion of this. Now, I will say, this test won't be a hard negative if it fails, because this paint is, you know, it's less than 24 hours old at this stage, it's probably about 18 hours now. So I would imagine there's still a little bit more time here for this to fully cure. So if it fails, it's not necessarily a fail, but if it passes, it's definitely a pass. And that's really what I wanna test. So let's try those now, and then we'll try something a little bit more aggressive. I actually think this stuff might be cleaning the dye out of this. All right, so that's a pretty clean towel. All 
All right, so it actually looks like we've rubbed a lot of the black out of this. Um, it could just be a trick with light and it is wet, so I'm just gonna let it dry and then we'll come back to it. All right, so we're nice and dry now. This has got a little bit softer after that cleaning. It's actually um, a little bit encouraging. Uh, the back, however, we managed to actually scrub a lot of the color off it. Um, it feels to me like it's gone back to something close to before we started using the Duplicolor product. Um, it is, again, nice and soft, which is great, uh, but kind of defeats the purpose if you wash the color out at the same time. So now it's time to go a little bit harder with this. So let's bust out the gurney. All right, so some mixed results there. Let's leave it out in the sun for a bit and come back when it's dry. All right, so we're back in the garage, the seat's dry. Let's see what we got here. So, really, really interesting results here. I'm not gonna get into these too much just yet because we are not done with our destructive testing. So, what's next? If we look at the vinyl, the spray has held up actually pretty well in my opinion. I mean, that pressure washer that I've got is extremely high pressure. Uh, and I was holding the nozzle, you know, right up close to this to do the maximum amount of damage that I could. And, um, you know, I managed to clean it off in some places, uh, but not everywhere. So uh, this was a pretty good destructive test for the fabric. We need to do something better here. We need to go harder. Uh, all we've tested really is adhesion at this point. Uh, the one thing I really do want to test is flexibility. So let's do that now. Lay that down flat. All right, so this is very scientific. We're about to perform a scrunch and fold test. All right, so the idea being is if we roll this and it starts to lift or peel, things like that, then we know that the adhesion isn't great. Just gonna keep doing this a little bit. That all looks pretty good there and then All right, so scrunchies away. Test complete, and now because I don't want this to become a home for spiders and other animals, we're gonna drift stitch it back together. Good as new. All right, so a couple of other tests. You've just put your new seats in. First thing you do, go down to Macca's, you get yourself a Diet Coke. And then, whoopsie. All good there. And while that might be good for cleaning copper coins, let's go for something a little bit harder. Wax and grease remover. Leave that on for a sec, give it plenty of time to eat in if it's going to. You can see here, um, 
this discoloration here, it looks like a rip. We'll come back to talk about that in a second. I've got a clean side of the cloth. Oh, wow. That is really interesting. All right, I'm glad I pointed that spot out to you guys before. And it looks like we've got a similar thing here. All right, so that's where we're gonna stop the destructive testing. I think we've had enough with this thing. This will probably end up in the Shalika as the seat I use when I drive the thing around um, before we decide to do something else with it. So I don't wanna destroy it completely. Which means it's time to think about our findings. All right, so I think it's pretty clear that both of the products that we've used today have strengths and weaknesses, and they're not the same as each other's. The other thing we need to think about is that with durability in mind, there's some areas where this does make sense, and there's some areas where it really doesn't. So let's have a look. Now, if we look at the fabric section first, you can see uh, very clearly, I think, that neither product is going to hold up 100%. Now, I wanna preface these statements with the fact that this was intended to be, as I've said all along, destructive testing, meaning we're trying to push this well out of the boundaries of what we would normally experience inside the car so that we can understand where they fail and why they fail, or how they fail, more to the point, probably not the why, I'm not a chemical engineer. But for my money, there's definitely some lessons to be learned here. So let's talk about the Auto Glim black dye first. When we were spraying this onto the backrest, it was nice and even. Forget about the brushing. Don't recommend the brushing, don't do it. Uh, but on the backrest, it was nice and even to apply. And in areas where you did get a bit of modeling or something, it was pretty easy to go back and just touch those areas up. It does spray a lot of volume onto the fabric but it very quickly wicks through the fabric and is no longer on the surface. So, I mean, a lot of the times after sort of five or 10 minutes after spraying, it would soak in and you would see these areas where you've got the original beige on the top and then the lower fabrics have the black in them. That said, it certainly holds up pretty well to abrasion uh, and the fabric was softer after spraying, all right? Uh, and that's important if you're gonna do a seat. We'll get to whether you should do a seat or not in a second. Now, if we look at the base of the seat, this I didn't spray as hard. Obviously, I got the nozzle right up close and I basically blasted the black out of here and here on the bolster. So that shows you that regardless of which product you're using, you can definitely clean the whole thing off. One of the tips that I would give you if you want to dye something with your Auto Glim is if it's wicking through too quickly, what I did on the dashboard was I actually sprayed it on and I had a heat gun with me and I immediately dried it as much as I could. You have to be careful not to burn the fabric and I did in one little bit on that dashboard. But yeah, it certainly um, dried out the dye quick enough so that it was sitting near the surface and it didn't harden up as much either. So, you know, if you did want to go the Auto Glim product, um, that is one way that you could probably save a little bit of material. So yeah, on the bottom half, I held the pressure washer back further so that we didn't blast the dye out of it. It did still wash some of it off. Um, and certainly the Meguiar's upholstery cleaner really did a good job of rubbing off the back of the seat here. So yeah, pretty obvious that when it comes to the seat fabric here, we have the ability to break up either product. The Auto Glim, you'll go through a lot more product. You'll probably have a softer finish. Cover will be harder to get. The Duplicolor probably goes on easier, dries darker, but uh, abrasion and general feel of the fabric may be an issue for you. If we turn this around and have a look at the vinyl side. So firstly on this one, surface prep. Now, if we get down here and we look close, there really is no sanding marks, even where I use the green scotch bright. So if you wanted to do flexible vinyl and you're worried about adhesion and coverage, I highly recommend getting a scotch bright out and scuffing the entire thing so that it's nice and clean. And it's also got a keyed surface for this stuff to, uh, to bite into. In terms of the product comparison though, so, in terms of adhesion with the pressure washer, if I got the pressure washer close enough, we could definitely peel this off. And you see this area here, that was originally black before I put the wax and grease remover on it. And that was because the Auto Glim product had really good adhesion to the vinyl. The Duplicolor product did not have great adhesion to the Auto Glim product. So when I was running the pressure washer over this, a whole section just peeled off very quickly. 
That doesn't necessarily speak poorly of the Duplicolor. It just means that the Duplicolor was meant to go on vinyl and it was going on the AutoGlim product. So I don't know how I would call that one. Realistically, the AutoGlim product is really too watery for vinyl. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. If it sprayed out at a slower rate and you were patient enough to put 10 coats on this, then maybe it would be a good option. But because it's so thin and watery, it tends to congeal or fisheye or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and you get quite a patchy uh, application. The Duplicolor product, on the other hand, sprayed on a lot thicker, got a lot better coverage, and um, dried pretty evenly. In terms of uh, scrunch and fold test, uh, the true test of toilet paper use and of vinyl dyes, I believe, um, it held up really well. So, you know, a lot of this damage here, scuffing, is from it rubbing on itself. Uh, it didn't lift a peel or crack, which is the things that I was looking for here. So really, really impressed with that actually from an adhesion perspective and from a flexibility perspective. In terms of the chemical tests, you would wanna be careful and certainly do a test patch if you were gonna use a particularly strong interior cleaner. Now the wax and grease removal was funny. It hasn't touched the Duplicolor product, but where the top layer of Duplicolor peeled off and then we had the AutoGlim product underneath, it ate straight through that AutoGlim product. So yeah, again, you're probably not gonna do that to your car, but I think it's important that we know where these products actually stand up and at which point they're gonna fail. So that just leaves the questions of, is this a worthwhile process? And would I recommend the products? And for that, it really depends on the use. So hear me out. All right, so very quickly, final thoughts. Would I recommend fabric dyeing a seat like this? The answer to that, hell no. Uh, I think that the amount of dye you're gonna go through for one, but also the fact that it's probably gonna abrade off and highly likely to abrade off onto your clothes and things like that, um, especially if you're sweating in that seat or something. Uh, I also think that after maybe a, even a few weeks of normal use, you're probably gonna to start to knock the top off some of the dyed areas and you're gonna get the base color coming through and it's not gonna look good. So yeah, I think that is a fail for a fabric seat, but that doesn't mean that there's not other uses for it. Now, in terms of a vinyl seat, uh, again, I think you're in a high abrasion area, so you are likely to have to recoat something like this. If it was vinyl back and front, you want to change the color from the standard brown or white into a black, uh, you could probably do it. I think it'd be easier to just try and get black seats, but yeah, if you really needed to do it, I think the vinyl dyeing is a slightly more feasible proposition, but I wouldn't say it's going to be a great finish or that it's going to hold up long term. So then the remaining question is, does it actually have a place in the interior of a car at all? And my answer to that would be yes. So off the top of my head, I can actually think of a couple of areas where this would be really handy. Uh, and they would be areas that you don't physically touch or feel much. Uh, so not only does the fact that it crisps up a bit and goes a bit rough, that wouldn't be a problem and you're also not gonna rub the stuff off. So things like um, a faded parcel shelf on the back of like BMWs and things like that are common for it. They've got black parcel shelves, they're fabric, they fade over time, they look horrible. You could spray one of these uh, and blacken it right back up again and it would probably last for quite a long time. Fixing the dash like I've done on the RA28 is another good use, very similar to the uh, parcel shelf. Um, headlining, I think, would be a good one. You could potentially change the color of your headlining. Back on the BMW school of thought, a lot of those have gray headliners. Everyone wants a black. You could potentially uh, mask up the rest of the car and spray away while it was in the car even. So yeah, I think that's a viable use. Uh, and then I think if I could get a matte black or a satin black, I would really consider this pretty viable for things like door trims uh, and even doing things like uh, scuff plates. So you could potentially go over those with um, some of the, probably the Duplicolor would be the good one to use. Uh, and that would give you a nice black finish. Uh, I still do think that it's too shiny for a lot of that stuff. Love to see it in satin, love to see it in matte. But yeah, the main thing that I have learned today is I am super glad that I didn't start spraying away on that interior because those seats are probably still about a seven or eight out of 10. If I had sprayed all this stuff on them, I would have been really unhappy with it, I think. And in the end, I probably would have been tearing those covers off and replacing them. So. Yeah, I wasn't prepared to ruin those and I'm glad we did this one. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the exploration into vinyl and fabric dye. Now Christmas is almost upon us, so standard things, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Hope you guys all enjoy your break and I hope you get plenty of time to work on your project cars if you've got them. And with that done, it just leaves us with the standard stuff of me linking to the full Violet Crumble series up here and also linking to the Do For Now series down here. Other than that, I just wanna say 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.